everyone. I'm Lucy Wardle. I'm the Supply Chain Officer at Food for Life Scotland. I'm really happy to be here today to talk to you all about local and sustainable sourcing in school meals, along with Laura Muir from Scotland Excel. I'm going to quickly run through what we do at Food for Life Scotland and then I'll pass over to Laura. Food for Life Served Here is a programme run by Soil Association Scotland, a charity funded by the Scottish Government. And we've been around since 2007, so we've got a long history of working with local authorities and suppliers here in Scotland. And the award is backed by annual inspections for the local caterers. And it's, it's all about looking to encourage and reward those caterers who are really working hard to serve fresh food, to source environmentally sustainable and more ethical food like organic choices and free range, um, and also making healthy eating easier and championing local suppliers and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Here's a map of where we operate across Scotland. We're currently in 17 local authorities but working with many more um, and that's you'll see there over a thousand sites across Scotland so it's a huge impact on the food system and really valuable route to market for suppliers in Scotland. And we, we've certified over 100,000 meals a day, which is a huge impact to all of those pupils eating healthy, sustainable meals made from Scottish produce. A little bit more about our team and, and what we do. So we have partnerships managers who work with the local authorities. We also have menu and catering skills officers who actually support caterers to develop menus and recipes around local and seasonal produce. Uh, we also offer support on data analysis and supply chain support, which is where um, I come in. Uh, we have a huge focus on, on local sourcing and that comes directly from our funding from the Scottish Government. And it's all about getting more Scottish food into Scottish school meals and that means cutting food miles, decreasing imports and increasing the amount of fresh quality Scottish food on the plate um, and all of that you know is investing public money back into public goods and local businesses. It's all about community wealth building and encouraging new jobs, more opportunities and really investing in, in the local economy. And that's really where our work in the supply chain comes in. Now I've got a short video that I'm going to show, which will give you more of an idea of how this really works on the ground with suppliers and local authorities. We've been working with Food for Life to increase the amount of Scottish produce that we have on our menu. And Food for Life really helped us by putting us in touch with suppliers and local suppliers and we've now seen the benefit. Pupils and parents really recognise um, the importance of locally sourced produce and knowing where their produce comes from. So over the, the last few years, um, I think it's safe to say a lot of the councils have been a much more focus on local Scottish sustainable produce. So if you look back, say, seven, eight years ago, it was about getting the best price. Whereas if you skip forward to today, we're making sure it's got the animal welfare standards in place, that it's coming from local and sustainably sourced places or coming locally from Scotland, that there's an emphasis on the food miles. We don't want it travelling halfway across the world if we can grow it in our own country. 80% of our butchery meat is now sourced in Scotland. We're looking at a pilot of locally sourced vegetables now. A lot of people think it's going to cost substantially more and certainly for, for our award, we've not seen any cost increase for going for the bronze award. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about how we actually work across the supply chain to deliver food for life. Um, so we support local authorities by identifying opportunities for them to increase their Scottish sourcing, increase their higher welfare products and really look at supporting more Scottish SMEs. 
We troubleshoot and problem solve with any supply chain related issues. And really importantly, we celebrate success with local producers and Scottish sourcing. So we have a dedicated communications and PR team, which do a great amount of work to really highlight all of the wonderful work that's going on in Scotland. With suppliers, we link them up with, with councils, we find new routes to market for them and highlight business opportunities. And that's by facilitating projects with caterers using data analysis to advise on volumes and demand. Um, and this all really develops new markets for the Scottish suppliers and drives demand for more local and higher standards of food. We also signpost to other support available, like from the Supplier Development Programme, and highlight contract opportunities like those available for, through Scotland Excel, which you'll hear more about. Um, we work also across the industry with other stakeholders um, to raise the profile of the public sector as a really valuable route to market and collaborate to, to get as much Scottish produce into small meals as possible. So how we can help you? First of all, get in touch. Whether you're a local authority who wants to get some more local suppliers into your school meals, or whether you just want to connect with a local grower or a local producer, or whether you're a supplier and you would love to supply your local primary school or even your local authority, just there's my email address, get in touch with me and we can have an informal chat about um, things that you could do. Also, we have a lot more information and case studies on our website. So now I'll pass you over to Laura from Scotland Excel to talk a little bit more about what's available in Scotland and contract opportunities. Thanks, Lucy, and hello, everyone. My name is Laura Muir, and I'm a Senior Procurement Specialist within the Corporate and Education team at Scotland Excel, looking after the food portfolio. So who is Scotland Excel? We are the centre of procurement expertise for the local government sector. We are a leading non-profit shared service funded by Scotland's 32 local authorities. Scotland XL is governed by a joint committee of elected members from all local authority partners, which are responsible for the strategic direction of the organisation, as well as approving the annual budget and business plan. A subgroup of this body, the Executive Subcommittee, meet regularly to approve contract awards and other key business decisions. Our services are designed to help councils meet the twin challenges of reducing budgets at a time of growing demand. Collaborative procurement increases efficiency and ensures money is saved to protect frontline services. And by working together through Scotland Excel, councils can realise a host of social, economic and environmental benefits from their spend. Our £2 billion contract portfolio supports the delivery of social care, construction, roads, transport, environment, corporate, education and ICT services and achieves annual savings of circa 14.4 million. A strategic approach ensures contracts are designed to encourage innovation, facilitate policy, support local economies and generate social value for communities. But what does this actually mean for the public of Scotland? Well, I can honestly say for everyone in Scotland, our frameworks will have some impact in your life, whether it's the bins you put your waste in, the vehicle that picks it up, the salt in the roads, the food supplied to your children at school lunch, or the adaptions made in elderly people's homes to allow them to remain home for longer. This all comes from Scotland Excel frameworks. Over the past 13 years or so, Scotland Excel has led the way in public food procurement, pushing its food portfolio to deliver value, quality produce for councils, whilst also creating wider benefits for Scotland's economy. Our food contracts, which include milk, meats, frozen foods, bread and rolls, fruit and vegetables and groceries, are now worth a collective of £82 million per year. The help to supply the product serves up and down the country in schools, nurseries, care homes, community centres and many more. We work closely with suppliers and local councils to ensure our frameworks meet the requirements of all relevant legislation, particularly the nutritional requirements for food and drink in Scotland, and setting the table the nutritional guidance and food standards for early year and childcare providers. In addition to our food portfolio, we also have a framework for catering sundries. This framework has become vitally important to councils when pupils return to school after lockdown, with many councils having to look at alternative options for serving lunches, including box lunches to be served in classrooms. 
Locally sourced produce has become an increasing priority for councils, so we have stepped up our role to make sure public sector food contracts are more accessible to Scottish business. This also underpins the Scottish Government's drive to make sure the power of public spending is used to boost Scotland's economy. This became even more important in the past year or so, with local supply being vital for our councils to be able to provide food to their most vulnerable residents during lockdown. We were keen to support the Government's Dairy Action Plan to include more Scottish produce in our groceries contract for yogurt, butter, cheese and margarine. So we included a secondary price list within the tender to allow suppliers to offer Scottish dairy products. As a result, a range of Scottish dairy products are now available for councils to buy. By switching their cheese to a Scottish product, local authorities have generated more than £1.1 million of business for the Scottish cheese sector. And to bring more Scottish produce onto our meats framework, while still being in line with procurement regulations, we were able to specifically ask for Scotch beef and Scotch lamb by including protected geographical indication or PGI in our tender. When developing our frozen fruits framework, we gave suppliers the opportunity to bid to supply food only to create opportunities for smaller companies that didn't have national delivery logistics in place. As a result, an Aberdeenshire-based fish supplier secured a place in the contract to supply Scottish haddock, which has created the potential for £1 million of new business for this small family-owned company. This approach was so successful that we followed it for our groceries and provisions framework, leading to the appointment of five SME manufacturers to the framework. Across the whole food portfolio, spending by councils on Scottish products has continued to rise. Over the past five years, it has increased from £8.8 .8 million to £15.8 million, and now accounts for more than 36% of core product spend through our food contracts. Not only is this approach good for Scottish business, but it is also helping to create a greener Scotland by reducing our food miles. As our food portfolio continues to evolve, we keep engaging with Scottish food producers and manufacturers, whilst continuing to support the delivery of healthy and nutritious school meals through our frameworks. We also continue to work with a number of key stakeholders across Scotland, including the Soil Association, who are, we are presenting with today, Scotland Food and Drink, Quality Meat Scotland, APSE and Assist FM. As well as looking at sourcing local Scottish products where possible, Scotland XL has also been working with suppliers to help bring Scottish SMEs to our frameworks where possible. We split our frameworks into different local authority areas, whereby a supplier could bid for one, any or all 32 local authority areas without being penalised. In some cases, we also split a local authority into th further regional lots if they know of local suppliers that may only be able to bid for certain parts of the authority. This resulted in our current generation of milk framework having 56 geographical lots. We are currently developing two tenders within the food portfolio. Our current frozen foods framework was due to expire at the end of this month. However, with the perfect storm of COVID-19 and Brexit, we took the decision to extend this framework until the 31st of March 2022. We are currently developing the tender for the next generation of this framework to go live on the 1st of April next year. More information can be found in the prior information notice, which is published on Public Contracts Scotland, or please get in touch with me directly to discuss in more detail. Our current milk framework expires next February, and work is also underway for the renewal of this framework. Again, more details can be found in the PIN notice on Public Contract Scotland or by contacting Scotland Excel. Both tenders are expected to be issued through the Public Contract Scotland tender website in August-September time. Early next year, we will also begin working on the renewal framework of fresh meats, cooked meats and fresh fish. The next generation of this framework is due to go live in October 2022. At the moment, there is a real buzz around public sector food in Scotland, and it would be a great time for new suppliers to get involved. With the rollout of universal school meals in primary schools and the SNP pledge to provide free breakfast to all primary school pupils and increase the number of councils participating in the Food for Life programme, there are more opportunities than ever before for local suppliers in our frameworks. With these pledges, it means that almost 400,000 children in Scotland will be entitled to free breakfast and lunch at school, and I want to make sure that our frameworks are in the best place to support this. The rollout of universal school meals in primary schools, together with the early learning and childcare expansion, may also create opportunities for other frameworks within the corporate and education team, catering sundries, commercial catering equipment, education and office furniture, to name a few. 
These are the contact details for me and Nicola Howie, who look after the food frameworks for Scotland Excel. If you would like any more details on anything that I've spoke about today, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen today. I hope you found this information useful and we look forward to taking your questions as part of the Q&A. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much, Laura. Really good to hear all of the impact that Scotland Excel has across Scotland. Um, so now we have some time for questions. So Laura and I will both be answering um, any questions that you might have. So just pop those in the live Q&A box. Um, we have one that's come in um, already that is about um, innovative suppliers and how can you present a new product. So that's a really good question because we've had a lot of that um, over the past year. Um, I'm not sure if all of you will be aware, but the nutritional requirements changed in Scotland. So that meant that a lot of products needed to be reformulated in order to meet those new nutritional requirements. Um, I can just answer quickly from a food for life point of view. I worked um, with lots of different manufacturers on some products that our um, food for life award holding um, local authorities were having trouble with. Um, and they they wanted to know what was out there and connect with the connect with the suppliers. So I kind of facilitated that. And we looked at some different options. We did a lot of work in yogurts and also worked with how the, the Food for Life Award does interact with those products that had come up. So um, in, in that example, I, I facilitated um, kind of a route of communication between the local authorities and the suppliers with what was needed with um, new products and what to do once you have reached um, you know the the end game of having that product ready to launch but also Scotland Excel is a huge um a huge part of that so I don't know if you want to add anything Laura about um getting new, new products out there to local authorities yeah I mean similar to what um Lucy's saying um obviously the past year there's been lots of opportunities to bring um, new products to the market to meet the new nutritional guidelines um I would definitely second what Lucy mentioned around yogurts because there were some real challenges there um finding products that meet, met both the nutritional guidelines and the food for life guidelines um also um for the increased fibre content in bread, um, there were some challenges there and there's definitely some opportunities in the market. Um, if MD would like to um, see the, the nutritional guidelines, they can be found online, but please don't hesitate to get in touch with me directly and I can, can send you a, a copy over and um, it kind of points you in the right direction if you are looking at developing new products, because obviously anything that is going into schools has to, to meet these guidelines. Thanks, Lucy. Yeah, great. So we have um, another question that's come in that is about um, kind of payment terms um, and small businesses being paid in 30 days and how important that is to small businesses. Um, and I agree completely. And I think this is why we talk so much about um, local authorities and school meals and public sector being such a good route to market because it's a really reliable contract. They usually for um, at, at least, I mean, Laura can add more on this, but I'd say two to three years and, and often um, they're extended longer to that. So it's a real stable um, route to market that you can rely on that you can also plan your business around um, so a lot of suppliers that I've worked with that have got involved with local authorities on all different types of contract sizes have been able to plan better for the future have been able to hire more people um, and really think about um, their strategy going forward because they have that contract that they can rely on and also say that you know the, the payment terms obviously are, are very reliable through the public sector. Um, and it's something that with a good relationship with the local authority and a catering team, you can talk around, you know, what's available and seasonality. Um, and they will often, you know, have ideas as well. So um, I think it's a really good opportunity. And it's, it's different from the private sector because you're not just responding to um, very strict um, kind of, and I say specifications of what a product has to be every time you know food for life is all about seasonality um, and working with local local suppliers and really supporting Scotland's food growers and producers and suppliers so I think that's really important and um, that it's more of an open dialogue with 
with the customer who would be the the local authority so i don't know if you want to add anything laura there are on payment terms and, and how it works yeah i mean obviously scotland excel we put the overall frameworks in place for the local authorities but each individual's authorities um kind of payment terms and stuff will vary from from council to council so it would be a, a conversation that we would need to have directly at the time but i do believe most of them are on the kind of shorter shorter payment terms um, but it's definitely a really good question and something that we would support any suppliers with that conversation with our councils great um now the next question that's come up is about um what if we miss out on a framework opportunity that has already gone are there ever any smaller contracts that come up that aren't through a framework that's a really good question and i think one of the the barriers that's seen in the public sector is that um, the tendering process and contracts only come live, you know, every couple of years. So it's quite hard to access them when those those opportunities aren't currently live. Um, so I would say, firstly, if you're not already, be signed up to Public Contract Scotland. And so you get live alerts of what is coming, coming up. And um, so hopefully you won't miss an opportunity there. Um, but also I'd say there are lots of different types of getting uh, of ways to get involved with a local authority and with school meals. So Scotland Excel's frameworks are one, but also you might be a, a supplier of one product. You could just be a grower of tomatoes. And that gives another opportunity because possibly you could enter into the school meal sector by using um, a different way. So a wholesaler or another um, supplier. So that's a way of, of getting involved through kind of a middleman that would be a wholesaler. Um, also some local authorities uh, contract themselves for, for smaller things or they might have a combination of using Scotland Excel's frameworks and their own contracts and um, again that would be um, you would find those through public contract Scotland but there's also opportunities to do smaller projects what we would call pilot projects so that's when a local authority wants to try out something new so that could be a really hyper local um project where you could be a really small grower and you want to connect just with your local authority or maybe just with a couple of schools and for those types of projects often that they're not huge um in value to begin with so it could mean that they're below the threshold that a local authority will need to tender for so that can be a way to enter the supply chain there so there are lots of different ways Yeah, I, I would kind of echo what um, what Lucy's saying there. That there's lots of different options there, um, depending very much on the product and what the interest would be from the councils. But we we're certainly open to the conversations. Although the frameworks are for a, a set duration, um, that that there are other routes to market that we can explore with suppliers, and we're more than happy to have that that conversation with with those that are looking to get involved. Oh, sorry, sorry, I've just realised Lucy's having some technical issues. Um, just while we are um, on the subject, the presentation that is up after us at um, 2.45 has just been added to the agenda recently. Um, it's a presentation in the Food Zero Scott campaign, which is backed by the STV's Green Fund. Um, and as I say, it's coming up immediately after us. Um, so please get involved in that. Um, this campaign will shine a light in the industry, which has been significantly impacted by COVID-19. Um, the non-profit visual, story, visual storytelling campaign is supported by the STV's £1 million Green Fund, which aims to champion the efforts of sustainable Scottish SMEs. So um, I think if you're, you're interested in this chat, this is definitely something that would be for you as well. Um, on to the next question. Um, if I become part of a framework, will my business name be highlighted to the councils at some point? Um, I want to use this as a good good news as part of other bids we do. Definitely, um, with Scotland Excel, we work really, really closely with our councils and we're, we're in touch with our, our um, user information group, our UIG, um, all the time. Um, when a new um, framework goes live, we do have a mobilisation period, which allows us to um, share information with all the councils about the new suppliers and the products that they offer. Um, and we also have a members area on our website where we would um, kind of hold supplier information so that it's really easily accessible by the councils. 
Um, but yeah, definitely your name would be up there in lights if you were successfully um, added to a framework. Um, next question, we have managed to reduce our carbon footprint by 93% and we'll be carbon neutral this year. Is sustainability considered and who do you contact first, Scotland XL or the Soil Association? Um, so definitely sustainability is a huge part of everything that we do at Scotland Excel um, and it plays a, a huge part in all our frameworks. Um, all our tenders have a mix of both um, commercial and technical questions. So the sustainability side of things would come under the, the technical element um, and there's always points allocated to this. Um, obviously the questions would vary from tender to tender, but it does definitely come into our considerations. For who you would contact first, it really depends what it is you're interested in. If it's something around the food, food for Life um, programme, definitely get in touch with, with Lucy. Um, if it's more on looking to get onto contracts and supplying to the councils, you're probably better coming to Scotland Excel. Um, I'm so sorry, Laura. My and just disappeared, which never happens. Usually very good. So just classic timing. So I'm so sorry there. I don't know what I missed. Um, have you covered all of these questions? I have covered up to the question on carbon footprint. Um, so I think there, there's another two new questions after that. Right. Okay. Um, I was just going to add that on the, um, I want the good news as part of other bids. Um, we do. So I was just, you've covered that one, but yeah, I, was, yeah. I was just going to add on the whole news part um, that I mentioned um, in my presentation that we have a comms team and we, we love doing work to highlight the amazing um, work that's going on with, with suppliers in Scotland and with local authorities. So that's something that, um, you know, we do offer all of our local authorities and the, the suppliers that, that work with them. Um, there so and also if you ever just want to get in contact with your local uh, authority you can you know just get get in touch um and i can uh, i can kind of have a chat and see if there's any opportunities there with the council so on to the next question and um, we've managed to reduce our carbon footprint by 93 percent and we'll be carbon neutral that is amazing well done um is sustainability considered um Okay, and who do you contact first, Scotland Excel or the Soil Association? So you've not done that one yet, have you, Laura? Uh, well, well, uh, well, I've kind of covered that from the Scotland okay. Excel point of view, yeah. All oh, um, right, okay, sorry, I missed that. Um, so, yeah, I'd say with uh, Laura's probably talked you through how the how the weighting works on the on the frameworks and the tenders and how sustainability is considered. Um, and, yeah, I guess it, it really depends on how the local authority chooses to contract if they're going through Scotland Excel, if they're doing something themselves. Um, I'd say Scotland Excel and Laura will, um, will have said this, are really open to, to helping suppliers where they can, so you can get in contact with them. And when you see a contract on Public Contract Scotland, you'll see that there's a contact um, email there. So you can get directly in touch with that. Um, but also, yes, you can get in touch with the Soil Association. I will always be happy to help. And if I can't, then I will point you in the right direction. But um, I think sustainability is a, is a huge thing. It's getting bigger for all the local authorities. And there's a lot more interest in, in that. So um, I think that's amazing. And uh, yeah, it should be a really great selling point. So I'm OK. Um, I have a green project in relation to energy and building decarbonisation. Are there any pilot projects and what would be the best point of contact? Um, well, that is a great question. I deal solely with food um, and school meals. So I think I'll be passing that one on to you, Laura. Um, yeah, um, it, it's, it's a really, really good question. Um, Unfortunately, myself as well, I, I do deal pr predominantly with the um, school contracts, but we do have um, obviously a construction um, team within Scotland Excel. Um, so if you wanted to get in contact, I could certainly pass your details over to the, the construction team or alternatively, alternatively, we do have a stand at the exhibition today um, for Scotland Excel. So um, if you wanted a, maybe a more direct answer, um, you might be best to, to pop past the stand and, and speak to the team. Yeah. 
Um, so I can't see any more questions coming in just now. So if anyone does I have think there was just one more there, sorry, Lucy. Oh, no. um, it's I'm really just starting out in public sector bidding and I oh sorry, my screen's just jumped. <laughs> I feel like it should be easier to get foods on plates in schools. Do you have any tips on how to go about starting those conversations with schools? Yeah, definitely. Um, I agree with you. It should be easier. And um, that's what we're really working towards um, is to make making those, you know, those conversations and those connections easier. So I'd say um, definitely, hopefully you've got access to my email address on here um, and my details should be available. Get in, in touch and I, I'd be happy to have, um, you know, a conversation about your particular situation and how you, you can get involved. But also I'd say, you know, connect with the local authority and um, hopefully this is me I can help with, but also try and um, connect with the local authority themselves and have conversations about their, their school meal offering and how you would like to get involved. Um, and, you know, like we said, Scotland Excel as well will have um, framework opportunities. But I think it's really about getting in touch and, and having a chat about it. Because even if maybe if you've just, you know, started a business, it might be something that you want to consider in the future or you want to kind of plan for or see what you need to have in place. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's all about um, getting in touch and starting off those conversations and, and seeing what else that is out there as well. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people doing work on on local food. I know Scotland Food and Drink have lots of regional food groups that um, do some really interesting work. And that's not just for public sector, that's for um, everything, private sector as well. So um, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot happening on, on local food. And I think it, through the last year and, and COVID and everything, it's really highlighted that smaller local businesses um, really, really served those local authorities well throughout that that unprecedented time so um i think yeah it, it's uh, it's big on everyone's agenda yeah um, wholeheartedly agree with that lucy and um, the one thing i would ask would be um, and i think i, I kind of said it earlier if you are looking to pro get products into school meals um probably the first point i put call it as checking the, the regulations and making sure that your, your product fits within them because if not the, the school's hands are quite quite tied on that because um, they obviously have to be meeting the, the regulations that are la laid out by the Scottish Government. That is a very good point. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot that. Yeah, I mean, if, if the product doesn't fit within those those um, regulations, then it is going to be tricky. But also there's there's been a lot of work um, as well with the Food and Drink Federation Scotland who have been supporting suppliers to, to reformulate their products in order to meet those those regulations. So there's definitely a lot of help out there um, you know, to access these markets. Okay, so another question, is there consideration for digitising the supply chain, which would improve efficiency and result in more sustainability? Um, yeah, I mean, these conversations are, are definitely happening in lots of different areas. I'd say um, from Food for Life's point of view, I do work on, on different projects that are looking at these things for the future, but I guess it, it's... Um, it really depends on the supplier um, and on that situation. Um, I mean, what do you think, Laura, about digitising the supply chain from a more kind of... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think, like you're saying, we're always trying to look at ways that we can improve efficiency and, and make things work better for the councils. Um, we do have the, not issue, but... Um, all of the councils kind of work with slightly different systems and things so we do have to find a kind of way of doing things that works for all of the councils in Scotland for the Scotland Excel frameworks and um, but we're certainly open to to any conversations and um, if suppliers have ways that they think that we could be improving things it's certainly something that we would consider and um, take to our internal kind of steering groups discuss with our UIGs and and see if it's something that um, everyone can get on board with um, it's very much a team effort at Scotland Excel. Um, we put the frameworks in place on behalf of the local authorities. So any decisions that we do come to, we do we do speak with all our councils to make sure that, that everybody's on board and happy with it. And then oh, there was just another question about my email address, which I think I've just typed in the box there. So hopefully, hopefully you will have had that. Um, so it should be available to you. Um, 
Have I missed any questions there, Laura? Um, no, I think that's um, everything that's come through. Um, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. oh, there's a... A feedback comment on the um, on the digital um, side. It could be as simple as barcoding for traceability and provenance. I mean, I think that's a really really interesting because a lot of the work we do at Food for Life is all about um, kind of measuring how much spend is, is coming from Scotland to really support Scotland's um, producers and suppliers. And I definitely agree with you because you know a lot of the time it's difficult to um, to actually track that because we we don't have the information or if it's a product that's seasonal it can the origin can things like fruit and veg for instance the origin can change throughout the year um so i agree with you that that something like barcoding would be would be really really important i suppose it's um i don't know how that would kind of filter through maybe you can help me there laura with coming from our uh, you know especially from scotland excel through to the suppliers would it be something that you could look at maybe in your yeah, it would definitely be, be something for for the future. To be honest, it's it's not something I can kind of answer on the spot and um, how it would work. I would really need to speak with the suppliers and get a better understanding of, of how they would envision that kind of working and and what they would um, be looking for from us and and from the councils to kind of get involved with that. But it's a really, really good point, and and you know, as Laura says, definitely something that's going to be important for the future. Okay. Well, unless there's any last minute questions to come in, um, I think that that would be a good place to close off unless you have any passing um, comments, Laura? No, just just a reminder. I know I, I kind of mentioned it um, when, when Lucy had froze earlier, but just about the wee presentation coming up after us um, for Food Zero Scott, um, please um, go along and and have a wee watch of that. I'm sure it will be of interest to this, a similar audience as we've got just now. Um, but thank you all for listening. And as I say, um, I believe you'll be able to kind of get the presentations back um, at the end. And, and my contact details are are, are available um, within the slides. But um, we do have a team from Scotland XL um, exhibiting today. So please visit the stand, speak to the team, um, and they'll be able to feedback any questions um, to either myself or to the relevant person within Scotland Excel. Yeah, and thank you for coming along today and um, kind of listening to us talk about school meals. And I think it, it's such a great opportunity for suppliers and everyone is, is really looking at local food as the way forward. And there's so many opportunities. Um, so it's really nice to have you with us today. Um, and yeah, you know, as Laura said, get in touch um, and, and get involved. And, you, you know, you can check out the, the website that I linked in my um, in my slides as well to the Food for Life Scotland website that has some more information on, on, on suppliers and how we've got involved with, uh, with the industry so far. So you can check out that for more information as well. Thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Take care. Bye.